Good afternoon. Welcome to another week and another day of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're going to be turning through to the Gospel of Mark again as we continue traveling through the narrative there. We find ourselves in Mark chapter 5 and we're going to be looking at the last section in that section of four miracles that I told you about last week. But before we read that, let's come to him in a time of prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you for your word. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the way that you have given us uh, your holy scripture that speaks into our life and informs us of Jesus Christ. And we do pray, our Father in heaven, that you would bless us, that we might see him and love him and respond to him as we find him in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. Now skipping down to verse 35. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kumai, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. <clears throat> I said last week, if you missed it, I said last week that this is part of a part four story. So if you have a look back at the beginning of, sorry, the end of chapter four, you see Jesus calming the storm, showing that he has power over nature. You see Jesus in chapter five healing the demon, showing that he has power over the enemy spirits. Then you have the woman being made well, showing that Jesus has power over sickness. And then finally here, we have the fourth section of the story. You see, if all Jesus did when he came was to restore people's health, was to remove people's evil spirits and calm storms, that would be wonderful. And for the first century Jews who experienced it, it would have been a great gift to them. But if that's all Jesus did, then the world is no better off than when Gandhi came. You see, Gandhi came and taught amazingly. And so have other religious teachers. But if Jesus is nothing more than what other religions call him, a wonderful teacher, a great moral, a great moralist, a great prophet, if that's all he is, then he is of no hope to you and I. But this fourth part of the story drives the final nail home and shows us that Jesus is far more than just a prophet, far more than just a good teacher, far more than a moralistic example. But he is the son of God who came to conquer even death itself. And so here you see Jairus, the synagogue leader. It's interesting, we often think about Jesus and his confrontations with the Pharisees and the religious leaders, yet here is Jairus, the synagogue leader, coming. And see his faith as he comes to Jesus. He comes to Jesus and he falls down. And what does he say in verse 23? My little daughter is at the point of death. Come 
and lay your hands on her and notice this faith. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Jairus had no doubts at that point. He was sure that if Jesus would come, if Jesus would come to his house and just put his hands upon his little girl, she would be made well. She would be made alive again. Jesus goes with Jairus, doesn't he? And then we get that interlude that we looked at at the end of last week. You can go check that out if you missed it. And that interlude where he deals with the woman, he gets delayed and slowed. Some people might say he was unloving and unkind. It was an emergency to deal with. Don't spend time on this little old lady. You can deal with her another time. There's something far more important. Here's a religious leader. Here is one of the people you really need to help. And yet he delays for the little lady. So what happens? By the time he's finished with the little lady, we're told in verse 35 that one of the people from the house has come and says, your daughter is dead. Your daughter is dead. And you can see Jairus' faith wavering can't you his faith wavers it doesn't tell us that but you can pick that up they have the discussion and, and Jairus is thinking he can heal her there's no no category in his mind saying that Jesus can raise her from the dead and yet like Lazarus Jesus waits so that this girl will die so that he can declare his glory show his power show his majesty and fill you and I with hope and so as they're discussing, Jesus says, don't fear, do not fear. Verse 36, only believe. Hold on to your faith, Jairus, because the king of eternity is here. The one who has power over death, the one who holds the keys to Hades, he is here. He is present with you. And so Jesus brings Jesus brings Jairus and three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, into the house. He, he banishes out the worldly doubters, the ones who scorn and, and laugh at him. He casts them all out and goes up to this little girl and says, get up. And she gets up. She is plucked back from the dead. You see, Jesus has the power to bring people back from the dead. He did it to Lazarus. He did it to this little girl. And he did it to a son. But even that, honestly, even that by itself offers us no hope. You see, if all Jesus had the power to do was to calm the storm and to cast out the demon and to heal the sick lady and to raise this child from the dead, it was a blessing for them, but it offers no hope to you and I, if that's all he does. But that's not all he does, is it? You see, this is here to point us to a greater reality. Now notice, in all of these stories, there's something similar. The disciples were afraid. The de demoniac was afraid. The, healed, the little old lady was afraid. Jairus was afraid. And yet Jesus banished all of their fear by his power and his strength. Now, what is the greatest thing that causes humanity fear? Is it not death itself? And yet what does the Apostle Paul write in 1 Corinthians 15? He says these words, when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O death, sorry, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. So death has a sting. Death has a victory. It's the law and it's sin. But... Thanks be to God, Paul says, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this narrative is pointing to a greater reality. It's pointing to something infinitely more important. You see, this little girl was going to grow up and die later. But Jesus was pointing to what he would do on the cross. Jesus would die so that this girl would be able to rise to eternal life. This girl girl would live again, even after she dies again. 
And that's the hope for you and I. Jesus came to banish all of our fears so that we might trust in him by faith and have eternal life. And so the question for you and I is very, very simple. Will we trust in Christ to have our fears removed? Will we trust in Christ to have our sins removed? Will we trust in Christ to have our death removed? Because he offers to do all of it. He says, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. May you trust in him today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for eternal life, which is found in none other but Jesus Christ. We pray, like this little girl, you might take us by the hand and say, come, get up. It's time to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining me for another day in God's word. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon. God bless.